Hey, this is David Yang here with another installment of Full Stack Alumni Stories. And for me today, I'm very excited to have Ash Ryan. He's a recent Full Stack student and Full Stack fellow and has a really interesting story about what he's doing right now. So get started right away. Um, Ash, why don't we let you introduce yourself? Um, um, yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me. Uh, I'm Ash. Uh, I am just recently graduated from Full Stack. I finished the fellowship in September, which is about three months ago now. Uh, so after that, I started at Adobe, where I'm now the technical evangelist for our uh, creative SDK. All right, very cool. So oftentimes students are um, curious about what were you doing before you came to Full Stack? How did you kind of, or, yeah, what was your life prior to Full Stack? Right. Um, I suppose <clears throat> mine's is a little strange of a story, but you know, I've, I've spent most of the last uh, 10 years in Japan. Mm -hmm. So for the last five years, I've been living in Osaka, where I did international product management for a small tech startup there. And after that, I went on to uh, work f for a, um, a search engine. Okay. And uh, basically, they hired me out as a freelancer to manage some stuff based, uh, based around localization for the search engine. So when you say the search engine, do you mean the search engine? I do. OK. <laughs> uh, that, that's all I can say. Okay. Uh, so the, we were working on sort of the future of search. And it was a really cool project. Hmm. And not only was it the future of search in general, but we were making sure that it was happening in multiple languages at the same time. OK. Uh, this idea of working with multiple languages is absolutely fascinating. And I think one of the reasons they approached me in the beginning was because I speak Japanese. Hmm. So. We started out with a team of Japanese speakers or localizers and English localizers, and we ended up expanding that particular team to about five languages. Um, the other languages I don't speak, but <laughs> at that point we had a process and we had native managers who could um, make, vet the language itself and make sure that it was what it should be. Um, and it was a fascinating thing to work on. You know, we had on that team a hundred people around the world, wow. um, that none of whom I've ever met in real life. But we, we made some really cool stuff happen. So, that, and then you know from there I just I heard about Full Stack and uh, that was the next step. I came to New York and and uh, started school here. So, <clears throat> one story I always love to hear is that moment when you know you're around coders or you're around the development. And I mean, if you're uh, in the search engine world, clearly you're around a lot of programmers. And what was that moment when you were first saying, you know what? that's something that I would like to be doing instead of what I'm doing now? Or how did you fi find it? What was that first kind of moment or first step you took? Yeah, you know, I've had a lot of moments like that over the years. And, um, you know, one of the sort of, I always call it the gateway drug okay. uh, for me was WordPress. Yeah. Strangely. Um, but WordPress was something that, you know, I, I was in San Francisco for a while and I, uh, I would work for part time for a small record label in Oakland where I was doing things here and there and they were set up on WordPress. So what is this WordPress, right? <laughs> and this is 2008, so it was still pretty early. But at first it was, you know, just a content management system, really a, at that time a blogging platform. But it was so customizable yeah. and just take a few peeks under the hood and they had like this full-fledged editor and I look at that what is all of this and you know later I learned this is CSS or this is PHP kind of playing around with WordPress is what got me into it okay um, and then from there started realizing that there were other things out there and just kind of toying around so you kind of put that together with going to work every day and seeing people building iOS apps or um, web apps or what have you, and suddenly you realize, like, you know, I've always loved to create, yeah. and the ability to have that power in your hands, uh, just, it seemed, at the time, it felt really far away from me, almost impossible. Like, hmm. I, I, I am not smart enough to do this, I think was what the, the thought that would usually go through my head. I, I'm curious, uh, you know, I've, I've heard often from, it's interesting, from bankers, they say Excel VBA is your gateway drug, and from designers, it's WordPress. So like, you know what, I want to change this one thing, they ask this, the development team, takes a week, and then they find out it's like a one-line CSS change. And like, you know what, I can do this. What, um, what got you over that hump of, you know, I'm not smart enough to do this? You know, it's funny you mentioned Excel, because when <laughs> I was working for the search engine, um, we did a lot of stuff in Google spreadsheets. Okay. And so I kind of had both of those roads in. Okay. Um, 
Something about Google Spreadsheets just really cracked that open for me. Hmm. Um, there's just so much stuff that you can do inside of a spreadsheet that is is not programming, yeah. but at the same time you're you're getting closer to like that modular way of thinking or defining something here and then using it over here. And I think over time, getting used to that sort of thing and working with numbers and all of that. Uh, Something else, I think a lot of people will say, oh, I, I can't do math, therefore I could never program. Yeah. Um, digging around in spreadsheets for a long time like that made me realize that both of those things are not true. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. It's, um, the spreadsheet, I often say, is a great you know, uh, developer development editing tool, right? It's like you get to see all the data and the flow of the data right there in front of you instead of um, you know, in files and databases. And, uh, so you know, I'd love to, um, so you apply to full stack. Um, got in. Um, let's a little bit learn a, bit, a little bit about your full stack experience. What were um, kind of some of what, what are the things, the things that you did and learned, at, and maybe talk about some of your projects that you worked on? Yeah, sure. So I started full stack in March this year, um, and pretty early on, uh, we got into sockets, which was quite exciting. So <laughs> I remember, you know, outside of the normal curriculum, we were. I, I realized pretty quickly that you know, they've got this tutorial, and I've got some extra time at night, so why not? And kind of started toying around with the idea of a side project pretty early on. And this was just a basic thing where you go in and you make um, web chat in a local host. Mm -hmm. And soon enough, I was able to, you know, send that my you know my local IP address to different people in the class and now we have our own private chat session going <laughs> probably while we should be listening to the lecture but <laughs> that sort of caught on in our cohort and so oh, you, I never knew that you guys had your private chat room that's that's hilarious yeah and it is everyone kind of had their own little version of that at some point and okay. it kind of became a joke where by the time we got to our capstone projects people were like well should we should we put chat in it or should we <laughs> not um, so that was like a Pretty early on, uh, doing that in combination with, we also got a team together to do the Spotify Music Hackathon here in New okay. York. And it's, I think that's such a, a great hackathon for people who are a bit nervous about trying out a hackathon because it's so low pressure, it's only one day, and it's people just making things for the joy of creating. Um, we got a good group together of about six folks, went managed to somehow build something. This is maybe wow. four weeks after we started at Full Stack, right? So in a day, put something together, it works, it makes noise, and we got up on stage and uh, made a, gave a demo. And it even worked on stage, which is wow, that's not neat. always the case for a hackathon. So uh, that was another sort of confidence booster, I okay. think. Um, you know, you know, I want to ask you, um, as the students behind us are starting to plan um, their final projects, I remember your your project, which is the Pecha Kucha 20 by 20 um, shared slide demoer. And what I remember most clearly about your project was how clear the articulation of the vision was and the final demo of it. Um, can you walk us a little through walk, walk us a little through what Pecha Kucha is, how you came up with the idea, and how you were able to get three other people to buy into it and, and develop it so so well. Yeah, so uh, Pecha Kucha is, it's an organization of uh, events around the world and it, it currently exists in over 800 cities. So it started in Tokyo about 12 years ago and it's centered around this idea of 20 by 20. So they're presentations where you have 20 slides okay. and each slide goes by automatically at 20 seconds each. Um, it basically, what you're guaranteed is that when, if you, as an audience member, goes, go to this event, you are going to hear a, a diverse range of fun presentations, and you're not going to be stuck listening to anybody talk for too long. Because okay. they're all set at 6 minutes and 40 seconds. Um, I like that. The constraint makes a presenter more creative, right? You absolutely. have to do this, this rhythm. And I'm a, I'm a firm believer in that, that concept. I think a lot of people are, where you know, having these sort of constraints suddenly makes you think about things in different ways. and. You know, how am I going to get this information out in a, in a fun way and concisely? I see. And, and you're the organizer of one of the Osaka Pe Pecha Kucha? Right, events? the one in Kyoto. Kyoto, um, okay. Mm -hmm. So I was part of the, organizi the organizing team <laughs> there for a, about three years and some change, I think. Okay. Um, and I absolutely loved, you know, being an organizer in, in that particular city. Each city kind of takes on its own flavor. Um, Kyoto is a city of tradition. It's a city of art. 
Um, it's a city where people come from all over the world to try new things mm -hmm. or to try old things. And they bring that passion to these um, different presentations. And you just get, you know, we tried to balance it. Yeah, half, of, half of the presentations in English, half in Japanese, and she has a wonderful mix. Okay. Um, now, fast forward that to coming to New York. I'm now part of the Pachacucha Brooklyn team. Okay. Um, and we, again, are focusing on that sort of diversity of different people from different backgrounds. But as, as an organizer, I guess one of those pain points that you're going to have every time is this idea of you've got 10 different people who may or may not be used to giving presentations. And we're asking them, all right, put together your, your deck of 20 slides. Send them to us. And as people at Full Stack, right, we're thinking this is not super complicated, but you'd be surprised. <laughs> Maybe you wouldn't, I don't know, but I mean, some people really struggle with that sort of thing. How yeah, there's, a, there's I mean, beyond programming, there's a whole level of computer, uh, just basic literacy. Literacy, right, that, yep. Um, it's not, you know, we take for granted, but it's not common, right? No, it's absolutely true, and so that's what this uh, capstone project here at Full Stack was, that's what we were trying to tackle, was this idea of how can we make it where it's as simple as uploading 20 pictures to Facebook mm -hmm. and then let them kind of drag things around to decide the order and then just push a button and it goes to us. No email, no Dropbox, you know, just through a simple web interface. That's what we were tackling. One, um, I always like to ask people who are very creative and who clearly have a vision. What is that? Uh, and maybe, you know, maybe I'm making a presumption about how much vi um, vision is, but you clearly had a vision, you clearly articulated it well. How, how do you deal with that? Not, I guess frustration is one word I might use, between here's the code base that we have and here's how we get there. What, is, what are some of the tactics that you use to get your team excited about it, make sure that people are on the same page? Yeah, I think it, it was an interesting challenge to tackle. And one of the things I felt I was quite lucky about here at Fullstack was a lot of the projects I ended up working on were ideas that I had generated and I was able to find people who were also excited about that idea. Um, in some ways, I would say there was a bit of luck involved. I was kind of able to identify people who would get behind that idea from the beginning, and that helps a lot. Yeah. I think if you are sort of overselling a particular idea just to try to get someone on board, that sort of sets the tone for the rest of your collaboration. Whereas if you can sort of find the right folks that have that energy yeah. and can get on board with the idea, that vision, um, it makes things a lot easier. That's great advice I have to share, share later, that you can't force the idea onto people. You have to get the collaboration out. Absolutely. All right, I want to transition a little bit to, uh, to After Full Stack. You have a very interesting um, job title that I think a lot of our students um, even know about. So it's, um, tell us a little bit more about what it means to be a developer evangelist. Um, yeah, and what that title means. Well, you know, and I kind of went through that discovery process myself um, here during Full Stack. We had had a previous alum um, that had gone on to be a developer evangelist, and um, I didn't realize that that would be an option because in my mind, I've met developer evangelists before, and I, I wasn't really sure what exactly they did. Mm -hmm. um, for those who don't know, um, a developer evangelist, probably if you're a programmer or a coder, like where you're going to see them is often at hackathons. Yeah. They're the people giving demos of a certain company's library, API, SDK, those kind of things. And they're the ones that will help answer questions or give out the prizes and you know, things like that. So probably if you're looking at it from that standpoint, you might think it's all marketing. Yeah. Um, and there's definitely a, a portion of that where it is about outreach. But at the same time, really a, a technical evangelist is about almost being the first user okay. for a company's uh, technology product, whatever that might be. And in our case, we offer uh, an SDK called the Creative SDK. So we have development teams for iOS, Android, and the web who cr put this SDK together. And then I get to go in and be the first person to use this, which is pretty fun. I'm that sounds awesome. Yeah. Like, you're like the front line of like new technology kind of. Yeah, and I try to put myself in that sort of position of if I were a developer in a company strapped for time or resources in other ways, is this something that I would feel like it's you know worth my time to pursue or not? And based on that, I'm 
kind of looking at it that from that angle, while obviously looking at it from the company's angle as well and saying, okay, how can we better explain this? So we've got, for example, like a new feature coming out for Android, I'll take that in, build an example app just to test it out, uh, talk to the developers on, on our side, mm -hmm. and then write out some guides that explain it. So, you know, hey, developer out there in the world, if you're interested in this, this is how you can get started. We yeah. wanna I can't tell you the difference between how much I want to adopt the technology based on how good the documentation is. Oh, right? yeah. And I think that's what, you know, companies like Stripe and they just, they got that, that if the documentation is easy to read, yep. people will use this. Absolutely. Um, you know, I would love for you to share your story about, A, how you met the person at Adobe and what you did in your interview to really stand out. Because I, you know, I feel like there's, we all know going the extra mile as a cliche, but this, in my mind, was a story of actually doing that and seeing good results. Right. So I'm a big believer in going out and talking to people in meetups. Um, and it's just something I like to do, right? So, and that could be why I'm in the role I'm in now anyways. Um, but it happened to be that I had met uh, someone at Adobe who is our product manager there, this guy named Ari that I work with every day. Um, and is that a post South by Southwest party? Uh, <laughs> I, you know. okay. But yeah, we, we kind of talked there for so a while. Tech, yeah. And yeah, and he, he mentioned, uh, you know, talking about technical evangelism. And at the time I was like, yeah, I don't know. I'm not really sure what that is. And kind of left it at that. Um, but right after... He's probably looking at you and saying, you're <laughs> like from Central Casting. Like, <laughs> a speaker, loves to go to meetups, great programmer. Yeah, well, I would like to think that's true. Uh, and that's, this is the whole thing is, you know, a few months later, um, a, a mutual friend of ours uh, forwarded me a tweet by him that said something like, do you love helping developers and uh, helping bring forth uh, apps that enable creativity? Something to that effect. And I thought, oh man, that's like, that's too perfect. Mm -hmm. This is right when I'm starting the fellowship at Full Stack. So later that day I was on a, f on a phone call. <laughs> I just tweeted back and I was like, man, this, this is like, that says it all right there. And it just felt perfect from the beginning, uh, just based on a tweet. From there, the interview process was um, perhaps somewhat what people might expect coming out of Full Stack. So there was the idea where you have an initial phone screening and mm -hmm. we were doing live coding, just like we did for Full Stack, right? I remember yeah. doing that with Nimit at, um, at one in the morning in Japan, <laughs> talking to Nimit and coding some things out. Did the same thing with someone at Adobe, and uh, from there they, you know, a lot of these companies will ask you to put together some kind of technical challenge. So in my case, they were like, well, you're from full stack, you know JavaScript, so make us an Android app. <laughs> Show us that you can learn Java, build an app, <laughs> and then write a tutorial explaining how to a developer how to make that app. Um, and I'll admit that was a challenge, but it was one of those things I was very curious, right, yeah. about coming out of full stack. How capable are we to learn completely new languages and platforms? And to your credit here, I have to say that quite capable. <laughs> I mean, the thing yeah. is, like, we're I, one of the great things that you guys have brought up again and again while you, you were teaching us is the idea of, all right, we're showing you right now we're, we're learning JavaScript and we're learning Angular and Express, you know all these things, but the idea is more about learning how to learn these, this new stuff more than just being like an Angular developer for the rest of your life. Yeah. And so it was, you know, doing that technical challenge for Adobe was, it was a challenge, but it was an awesome challenge. Yeah. And by the end of it, even I had this small Angular site that you could build a tutorial for <laughs> Android. So some of that full stack knowledge directly impacted that challenge. That I, I've looked on their site recently for their Creative SDK. They're using some of that content that you wrote early on, or is that something um, you're transitioning into? We're transitioning it. So for the Android stuff, uh, oh, increasingly more of it is stuff that I've written. We're actually we're going to be pushing two new Android guides this week, well. ho hopefully. <laughs> um, they're, they're, in the, they're, they're pretty much ready to go. Uh -huh. um, so over time, what, what I'm personally working on right now, one of the projects is uh, parity and documentation with iOS and Android. I see. So Is iOS much farther ahead than Android? In terms of the documentation, okay. in terms of the guides, I think more important, the documentation, like the SD, the references, the class references are there. Um, but 
That doesn't paint the whole picture. It doesn't. Yeah. How do you get started? Yeah. So that's where we started was the getting started guide. And then I wrote the image editor guide. And then we've got a few others coming out. I'm also writing for the blog every week. So if you go to, I think it's blog.creativesdk.com. Uh, there's two people writing on that blog. Um, Swati on our team writes about our partner developers who build great Android and iOS apps. Okay. Um, and she kind of shows off, here's this great app out there, and here's this functionality that is using our SDK, uh, whereas I'm writing technical content. So a lot of my blog posts right now are starting out, hey, Android developers, because <laughs> we haven't been communicating with them through the blog up until now. So we're building out this content that doesn't really belong in the developer portal, but I think is still, you know, those kind of questions that come up on Stack Overflow. Okay. Things that people are asking a lot. Well, let's just get that out there with an official, like, yeah, here's how you do it. That's awesome. Kind of thing. All right, a few, a few final questions. Um, one is that, you know, Adobe is one of those companies that I find foundational to, like, kind of the modern um, information revolution, right? Like Photoshop, Illustrator. We couldn't run, run all this without those tools. Um, what's it, but you know, one thing I know very little about what's it like to work at Adobe. Maybe you tell me what's the culture there like. Um, yeah, it seems like a. I am still so new. I've I've been there for a little over two months now. I can say that it's massive. So part of it has been you know being a technical evangelist. I'm working with a lot of teams. I mean, not only am I working with engineering for Android, iOS, and web, but other sort of stakeholders internally and kind of finding out the right person to talk to and what time zone they're in <laughs> and those kind of things is, it, it, will, it has been a challenge in the beginning, but again, a fun one. And yeah. that's something I'm comfortable with from back when I was doing all the search engine stuff and working with people around the world anyways. Um, it seems like it will be an increasingly in-demand skill is kind of being post-time zone yes. yeah, centric, right? I mean, there's so much talent spread throughout the world that we can't all be in Mountain View or New York or... Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, my previous gig, we always communicated time in UTC. That's awesome. So there was no Great such thing as 9 <laughs> o'clock tonight. It's no, what, what does Greenwich mean time? I love that. This is how we talk about time. Um, so, you know, I think it's, it's been interesting because Adobe is large, but in, in some ways that can feel like it might slow the process down. This is my first time to work in a large company. But then again, I feel like we're capable of executing things in some ways faster than you might expect. And yeah. that's, that speed is really exciting to be a part of. So. so now we're really just focusing on, you know, with the SDK, now you've got all these first party apps like what you talked about. And the idea is, well, if you're building a web app, if you're building an iOS app or what have you, you should be able to become a part of that ecosystem as well. So instead of everyone building Photoshop, light, light, use tools that Adobe already has mastered and years of experience with into their apps. Yeah, absolutely. So I mean, you can be something where we, you can access like the Creative Cloud assets of your users, let them download something from our Creative Cloud into your app, make that edit within your app, and then they could either upload it back into our Creative Cloud I see. Okay. They can send it directly from the like the mobile device to the desktop and just open up Photoshop magically. The seamless integration across yeah. a bunch of creative tools, both first and third party, is that is a dream behind Creative SDK. Yeah, and that's that's where we're heading. You know, mobile's yeah. the future of creativity. Um, we're seeing that more and more now that with devices like iPad Pro. Uh, yeah, I just checked one out. They look they're amazing tools. I yeah. can't. I feel bad for the the Wacom. People. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, let me, um, another question I always like to know is, what kind of advice would you give to someone who's thinking, you know, I love coding, I'm doing these puzzles online, but I don't, I don't know if this is a career for me. How do they find that answer out, and what kind of advice would you give them? I think find something that you are interested in building. You, you definitely have some sort of, what's the, the phrase, the itch that you want to scratch, right? Scratching yeah. your own itch kind of thing. And if you have something, no matter how trivial it is, um, like, just find something small. Don't, you know, oh man, I really, I like Facebook, but it should have this one thing, let's rebuild Facebook. This is probably not a good first challenge, but some smaller <laughs> thing. <laughs> rebuild Facebook, yeah. Right. <laughs> so some smaller thing that you have is probably worth working on. I mean, again, for me, one of the first times I really started to try to build that muscle in a real sort of context at all was, 
man, I want to build a WordPress theme from scratch. Like, I want to start oh, with a good. blank page and figure it out. And there, there's some books out there that can help you walk through that process. And what's cool about that is by the end, you're going to be like, no, nah, this isn't enough. I can go deeper. And then yeah. from there, you know, if you're going to decide through that process, either I love doing this or maybe coding is not for me. And if it is for you, when you're finished, you've got all these ideas. So yeah. you're going to, you can get into tinkering on these little sections. And, you know, I spent a solid six months doing that with WordPress. And just by the end of that, I was like, I, I need more of this in my life. Yeah. Yeah, tinkering, I think, is a great way to get started, just ripping things open and seeing how they work. Absolutely. Um, another thing I'd like to ask is, what was your favorite memory at Full Stack? <laughs> I have so many. I, you know, that's really hard um, to say which one would be the best. Um, I went through my cohort with just some of the best people I've ever met, and we still talk all of the time, you know. I think a lot of the sort of post-class bonding um, I was never much of a board gamer until I came to Full Stack. <laughs> but man, I learned how to play some board games while I was here. That's awesome. And that's great. You know, it's nice to sort of, that gives you time to realize that when you're going through this learning process, you're not the only one who feels sometimes like, I have no idea what I'm doing. We have those days where we're going to feel great one day, and then the next day it's like, what is this? Yeah. And when you can share that, and you start to feel like, all right, I'm on pace. Yeah. And you're all sharing that similar feeling together. It's a very strong bond that you develop. Very cool. All right, Ash, thank you very much for coming. Yeah. If people are interested in finding out more about you, where can they follow you on Twitter or Facebook, the blog? Sure. Um, so a few places. I'll just throw, let's see, Twitter. I am ashryanbeats.com. No, not dot .com. <laughs> at ashryanbeats. My website is ashryanbeats.com. Uh, so that's me personally. I'm pretty much ashryanbeats wherever, including GitHub. Okay. Uh, but for the Creative SDK, I would recommend going to either creativesdk.com or blog.creativesdk.com. And the blog will give you, especially with our partner spotlights, a lot of ideas about what apps are actually doing with our Creative SDK. So maybe start with the blog, check those out, and then head over to the developer portal. Okay, sounds great. All right, yeah. thank you so much. Thanks for having yeah. me.